So I belong to an exclusive club with some great people. Two Roman emperors, Aristotle, Chief Justice John Roberts, and Lil Wayne. Um, this has controlled every major event in my life for the last 10 years. I have epilepsy. Now, when a lot of people think of epilepsy, uh, it's sort of a misunderstood condition. They envision uh, someone going into convulsions on the floor, uh, shaking, foaming at the mouth. And that is a type of seizure that happens. It's called a grand mal. The, there's another type, though, uh, that's called a petite mal. And that's something where basically uh, your brain works with electrical impulses. And a certain area of your brain has a surge. So uh, the lesion in my brain that causes these is in my left temporal lobe, which is my language center. So whenever I have a seizure, um, I lose my ability to understand English. So if I was speaking to you, if someone was speaking to me, I would have no idea. I'd be aware of everything around me. But depending on the area of the brain affected, uh, it can have different effects. People can lose their motor skills. There, there's other things. Uh, anything your brain can do can be affected. And there is a feeling that comes with this called an aura. And it's, it's not really possible to describe. It's like a non-headache headache or a non-dizzy dizziness. Um, so I, I started having these when I was 19. And I took a year off of college. I worked for my parents' company. Uh, went to conventions all around the country to work with uh, campaign directors during uh, politics. And I would set up meetings with them. And uh, I started to notice these auras. And I had no idea what they were. I thought it was a vitamin deficiency or something. Uh, I have since looked into it. and. Uh, an all-pizza diet does not, in fact, cause epilepsy. <laughs> um, so I, I was having these episodes while I was talking to campaign directors. So they would be speaking to me. We would be having a conversation. And I just shut down and nod and smile and take my way through it, uh, not knowing what it was. So the next year, I went back to college. And um, I got a job as a campus tour guide at Wright State. At that time, the seizures uh, increased to about four or five a day. And as I was giving tours, they would happen in the middle of them every time I got to the bookstore. So if you were on a tour with me, you would say, oh, you know, here's the bookstore, ladies and gentlemen, and this is, excuse me. Uh, sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. So this is the bookstore where you get everything, all of your supplies for all of your classes. And I became a legend among the other tour guides. It was like Bigfoot or something. Like you got to go see this. It's crazy. Uh, they weren't sure if I if something was actually happening or if it was some sort of like Andy Kaufman thing. <laughs> so they made it a policy anytime I gave a tour to send another guide out with me. Uh, and eventually they just said, dude, let's see a doctor. So I, I went and saw a neurologist, and they diagnosed me, they gave me uh, some medication. Epilepsy medication uh, on individual plants, on individual insurance plants, is not covered by any insurance agency. You have to be on a group plan. And this medication can cost eight, nine hundred dollars for a month's dose. Oh, okay. Luckily I was on my parents' insurance plan, uh, at the time when I was a student, so we were able to work through it. Um, what the medication does, it basically builds a dam in your brain, so it can regulate the flow of those electrical impulses uh, to keep the big ones at bay. Uh, I, I tried uh, medication, they kept cranking it up, there's a lot of different side effects because it changes the chemistry of your brain, so your emotions are all over the place. I once cried to radar love <laughs> uh, so at that point, I was not allowed to drive. I was not allowed to drink alcohol. I was not allowed to have caffeine. So at that point, um, I was a designated driver, but I couldn't drive. So I just became the designated. <laughs> I was a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> 
It'll keep you from drunk dialing your ex-boyfriend. But take out the grenadine in his Shirley Temple, and you'll have to deal with the designated. <laughs> um, so I, they, the medication didn't work at first. I kept having them. They were 10, 12 times a day. These kept happening. Uh, and I was a theater major at that point, and I was giving a monologue for a grade in my class for my final, and I had an episode on stage. And that's when I realized I couldn't do what I loved. So I went back to the doctor and said, you gotta get me something else, you gotta try something else. So he prescribed another medication, and it worked immediately. I didn't have any episodes for an entire month and at that point, I figured, you know what? This is fine. I'm, I'm, I'm over this. And I called my brother and said, hey, bring my car down to campus. Because for the first time in months, I'm going to be able to go and get my own groceries. I'm going to be able to go do my own laundry and get a haircut. This, this is big stuff. Uh, so he brought my car down to campus. And instead of just going right away to the grocery store, which I was so excited for, I said, you know what, I can go anytime I want. I don't have to go right now. So I went back in my apartment, hung out a little bit, and as I was getting up to go to drive my car, um, one of the kids in my theater class sent me a message on uh, AOL, said, hey, can you look at my paper for me? So I said, sure, I've got all the time in the world now. <laughs> uh, and I, I helped him out, his name was David Bauer, I will never forget his name because I sat down and worked on his paper, and the next thing I knew, I was waking up in an ambulance. If not for him, I would have been behind the wheel of a car. So, uh, from there, they uh, tried to figure out how to fix this, how, what combination of medication was, was going to work, and they played around with it, increased dosage, tried to mix something else in there, and eventually it did work. It took an entire summer. It took a, a whole school year and a summer, but I was back. And I was able to be in a community theater production. Uh, I got my driving privileges back with three days left before classes started uh, the next year. And uh, two days after getting those privileges restored, I was playing a game of basketball with my brother and came down on my ankle wrong, broke it straight through, and spent three months in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at that point, my brother started calling me Calamity Jeff. <laughs> um, so I, I was going through some serious shit. I was so close. I was, I was to the top of the mountain, and then I just fell off. And I went to the, the school counselor at Wright State, the psychologist, and they told me, you should be depressed. It's normal to be depressed in this situation. Like, if you weren't, there would be something wrong. Uh, but I, I started thinking of myself in the third person. I was not a protagonist in my own life. I was a supporting character. It would just sort of show up in other people's lives and then fade to the background. That's what I seriously thought of myself. Uh, but with that, in a weird way, it, it paved a road for me because I wasn't a tour guide anymore, for obvious reasons. Uh, and so I got a job in the athletic department in promotions, and I was never better at anything in my life than I was at that job. I never would have had that in a weird way had that not happened. So I, I earned an internship out of that at another university in Tulsa, but at that point, I was off my parents' insurance. It was $800 a month for my medication. My internship paid $800 a month. So my parents supported me the entire time. But it got to be too much. Uh, the stress of being away and the, the hours, and I ended up having another seizure while I was out there. So I had to quit my internship and come home. The only thing that I could do to guarantee insurance, which is the biggest thing if you have epilepsy, is to go on a group plan, so they, uh, they rehired me at work uh, at my parents' company. But I couldn't go on the road anymore, so they just made up stuff for me to do. And I was miserable. But my parents supported me, my family supported me, which is so huge. 
they had a round of layoffs, and I took um, I, I took my voluntary layoff. And there's no transportation, public transportation system where the company is. So I moved to Columbus where there was something uh, with Coda. Things got better. I stopped having seizures. We figured it out. I didn't have a seizure for three years. I got another job. I, I loved it. I, I was driving again. I had my own car. It was amazing. I, I got a girlfriend who I could go and see in five minutes instead of two hours on a bus. We could go out. We could meet anywhere. She moved out to Portland um, about a year after we started dating. And there wasn't much of a conversation about me following her because I knew I would have to quit my job and I would have to give up my insurance. So um, after she left, I had an annual checkup because by that point, everything was fine. To the, I only had to do annual checkups. It wasn't on a case by case, hey, you had an episode, come on in. So I had my annual checkup and three days later, three days, I had another seizure. I had to quit my job because I couldn't commute out there anymore. I had to sell my car so I could live off of that. And eventually I found uh, work through a staffing agency. I, I started a temp agency. They found jobs along a bus route. This is the most amazing thing. And eventually they hired me internally. So what I get to do now, what my job is now, I get to find other people's jobs, people who are in these bad situations, I get to help lift them up and get them in a situation where they can get on their feet. And I'm so grateful for that. And last month I was up here telling a story and I had two weeks before my next checkup. I had a seizure before that could happen. So I'm no longer on the road. They've changed my medication trying to figure out what it is They've increased it 40% in the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm tired, I'm worn out, and that's an effect that this has. But I've got insurance. <laughs> I, I hope you can feel the weight of how important insurance is. Just to be able to pay to have a normal life. So I've got support now. Uh, I. I can't drive um, for the foreseeable future. I had to go in for EEGs, uh, which are the wires that they stick to your head. They said, we'll try that out. We'll try some different medications, but within a year, if it doesn't get better, we're going to recommend surgery. They would take out the part of my brain that isn't working. And through this, um, I have to realize uh, another story that happened the day after uh, I had my EEG, I was on the bus to work, which is the last stop on the line. And there was a woman on the bus by chance who was kind of shying away from everyone else. She was very self-conscious because she had an EEG on. Uh, she had a take home with, with a towel over it, uh, was not approaching anyone. So I, I went up to her and said, hey, you know, I, I get it, it sucks. Uh, so what? How long have you had it? What, just striking up a conversation with this woman, just to kind of make her feel better. She said, well, I'm going up north uh, to, uh, to this doctor's office that I've never been to, but they're going to be able to take it off. So we got off the bus, and I didn't realize until I got into work that there's no doctor's office up there. There's the closest epileptologist, neurologist, is a mile up the road on 23 where there are no buses, on a federal highway that's under construction. And she had no idea. This is what people have to deal with. Some people have grand malls 10 times a day, five times an hour. They can't function in their life. I am one of the luckiest people on earth with this. I'm able to control it. This is... <laughs> Seeing that woman on the bus, as strange as this sounds, made me feel better. It made me feel awful for her. So bad, because I've been there. But I feel great. Shit's bad, but I feel great. Um, so, I, what I ask uh, after this, there are great organizations 
uh, the Epilepsy Foundation of Central Ohio, where I came from in Dayton, uh, the Epilepsy Foundation of Midwest Ohio, they are struggling for funds. And they, a lot of their work goes to uh, helping these people get bus rides, get transportation, get what they need, get that medication. Check it out. <clears throat> That's all I ask. Check it out, make a donation, whatever. Um, but maybe you can make a difference in these people's lives.